It is the afternoon of April 16th of 2020. We are in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. We are in the midst. We are in the middle. We are in the depth, the trough of this this crisis. And it's within that context that uh, I'm happy to welcome Matt Barton from Flight Path Economics. Matt, thanks for joining us. Now, obviously, as, as you mentioned, Courtney, we've got lots of big changes, uh, massive changes in schedules, massive number of parked airplanes. We've got 270 million Americans who are currently under stay-at-home orders um, through June, at least, probably longer. As of this morning, we've got 22 million people that have been pushed out of work in the last four weeks. Uh, and we're going to go through some other information that we have uh, sort of prepared for this podcast that paints a fairly ugly picture. Uh, I have to say it up front. And I think at this point, anybody who is looking forward and says they know exactly what's going to happen and when um, is probably mistaken, right? I don't think anybody has a great view on how this is going to get resolved, partially because this is a new, this is new terrain. There's all kinds of things that are happening now that have never happened before. And within that context, I think it makes sense to, to sort of dial back and look at the big picture. You, you set the stage fantastically, which is kind of a caveat to any discussion going into this, which is we have never seen this before. We don't know what's going to happen. We'll start at the core of the business, which really is the, is the economy and, and what, the, what the impact will be. Um, and, and the core of the economy then is, is the GDP. I'm, I'm uh, excited to, to kind of walk through uh, the slides that, that you've prepared on this. So really, we're looking at three recessions that we have as, as comparables here. The first is the, uh, what I have referred to here as the, the first Gulf War recession, which was in the early 1990s. The second we have was the recession that occurred after 9-11. And then the third is the most recent, which was the, uh, the global financial crisis and the recovery that, that happened after that. When you look at where you were before the recession, either in terms of GDP or in terms of the amount of, uh, of traffic that you get as an airline industry, how long does it take to recover to that pre-crisis or pre-recession point in time? After the Gulf War, uh, GDP measured in, in real terms, so you know constant dollars, uh, it took about 12 months for U.S. GDP to, to get back to its pre-recession level. And, and there's no doubt, you know, that, that was, it seemed like a long time at that point in time. Moving forward, after 9-11, it only took actually nine months for GDP to get back to its prior point. And I remember at the time, you know, everybody thought that that was going to be the, uh, the major recession in anybody's lifetime. And, you know, I guess in, in hindsight, you know, it's surprising that it only did last nine months in terms of the, the GDP recovery. But then you look forward to the global financial crisis. And, you know, that was a very different animal. And it took over four years for GDP to get back to its prior level. So I think, you know, that there's, there's a lesson here. For one of the things that's striking, obviously, is the, is the vast difference between the most recent recession and the recession that preceded it, for instance, after 9-11 or after the Gulf War. But as we advance, at what I want to look at here, the difference between how long it took the economy to recover versus how long it took the airline industry to recover. So if we go to the second slide, we can see that, um, you know, after the Gulf War, well, it took a year for the for GDP to uh, to come back. It actually took uh, you know closer to a year and a half, and, and in fact longer for uh, airline traffic to come back within the United States. So if you then dial forward one more slide, you see that after 9/11, it took even longer for the airline industry to recover, even though the economic recession was even shorter. And that trend then continues. If you advance yet another slide, you see that after the global financial crisis, um, you know, measured on an annualized basis, it took more than seven years for uh, airline passenger traffic to come back to where it was prior to the global financial crisis. Now, of course, air airline uh, profitability and so forth came back before that because the shape of the business model changed. But nonetheless, what we see here is that the amount of time that elapses between when the economy recovers and when the airlines recover has gotten greater over time. 
um, the amount of travel and amount of demand that exists in the airline industry as of, you know, let's say, you know, it close of 2019, a whole lot of that was, um, to use a word here, discretionary, right? So when you really peel it back, what's necessary? What's, what's the real core demand that people need in order to conduct their business, to, uh, to recreate, to go on vacations and so forth? And when you really kind of dial it back, when the economy gets ugly, a lot of that stuff goes away. And I think as we've as the aviation industry has developed over time, we've become increasingly, uh, you know, I don't want to go too far with this term, but over leveraged or over geared with respect to, uh, you know, how much of this demand, the underlying demand and the supply associated with it is dependent on what is really just purely a luxury commodity, a luxury product. Um, I know we like to think in the industry that uh, airline travel is essential uh, and certainly some of it absolutely is right. Um, but there's a fair bit of it that isn't, and that bit of it that isn't has been growing. Um, so I think a fair bit of that demand is, is is brittle. And if you look at what's going on outside, you know, kind of the, the historical comparison chain, you look at what's going on right now in the industry as a whole, we're down to 5% of demand. That 5% of demand is obviously artificially suppressed, right? There's people who aren't allowed to go anywhere. There's um, businesses that are deferring necessary travel, even though they might think that it's essential, even though it might well and truly be essential. Um, so it's probably more than 5% of, of aggregate demand that's, um, you know, kind of the core essential demand, but it's certainly less than where we are kind of, you know, on a normal basis. People aren't going to take vacations, especially now um, with, a, with a global pandemic, uh, corporate travel is, is going to be reduced. You know, that, traditionally that's more of the inelastic travel, but now you have not only the impacts to the economy and, and the cutback on discretionary travel that, that the corporations are having, but you also have the additional liability of somebody getting sick while they're on official business right. um, yeah. and, and traveling. So it's that, I, I think you make just a, a fantastic point about how, how we've been hearing a lot about the airlines are essential, and they are, but that is very different from how how they act economically, which is which is discretionary. That's why you see airlines first yeah. in, last out. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's right. And, and you know, before any of your listeners get uh, get upset with us for for saying things in this way, I think, I think it's important to say, look, you know, we, we're not advocating that we that we go back to only what is purely essential in a, uh, you know, a subsistence economy. A lot of the things that have, have been removed from the equation right now within the last four weeks, you know, that's really high value added stuff. You know, you're talking about people traveling to, um, you know, to sell goods and services. You're talking about people, you know, uh, going to um, family events, weddings, uh, funerals in some cases, uh, you know, and, and, th and those are really important things. And I, and I don't want to diminish the value of that, either for the economy or for, or for individuals or for their income or any of the rest of it. But having said that, when you do, when you peel it back, there is a whole heck of a lot of it, um, a heck of a lot of the aggregate demand that is basically sort of optional, frankly. In almost a, a twisted way, you can define exactly what is essential, the pure essential uh, travel is what's traveling right now. It's not a lot. Airline travel is going to be a huge part of the economy going forward. The industry is going to recover. In fact, it, what, what is certainly implied in, in your analysis and charts here, while you're suggesting that you know it takes airlines longer to recover, the implication is that they always recover, right? I mean, that's that's kind of the 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 inevitable portion of this is that look, it always comes back. It's a question of of how long. And I think that may be where there's, uh, I guess, just a changing of perspectives and, and understanding and realigning kind of the expectations on, on how long this, this, could, this could last. Mm -hmm.